Hey guys, my name is Justin and welcome to Healthboro, where we care about the design behind designer luxury. And if you do too, make sure to subscribe. <laughs> okay, sorry. So for today's video, I really wanted to do an updated review of the Telfar Medium Shopping Bag. And yeah, all my in here still. Can I say It's work stuff. If you're new here, I like to think of reviews on like five categories, and those are design, durability, comfort, investment value, and impact. Um, think like visual impact. I should just call it that category visual impact, but literally like whatever. <laughs> so I have a review of the Telfar medium shopping bag. I'll put it in the corner, uh, description, whatever. But I think one thing that is really great to talk about is like the longevity of bags and like how they handle after like years of use. So for full disclosure, I'm specifically reviewing one of my medium Telfar bags and it's the one that I use as my workhorse every day. I bring it to and from work, I keep my laptop in it and whatever garbage I <laughs> throw in this bag. Like I abuse this bag. So I wanted to give you a very real review of how the Telfar medium shopping bag holds up. When I go through the categories, I'm gonna talk about what I scored it last time and then what I'm scoring it now and if there's any changes and or why. I've definitely seen some pictures of people who are like, I wore my Telfar every day for like however many years and look at how like, blah, 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 this is garbage, uh, or whatever. And I'm like, oh dang, is that what's gonna to happen to mine? Let's talk about it. So the first category is design. When we look at the Telfar medium shopping bag, it still is what it is. It is a horizontal, like an east-west rectangular tote bag made out of like fake leather, also known as plastic. It's lined, it has a magnetic press lock. Is that what that's called? I don't know, someone made fun of me before because I did, called it the wrong thing, even though I knew I called it the wrong thing. Anyways, but it has one zip pocket and a little special like pocket, you know, if you know, you know, which okay, I, now you know, so whatever. And then it has the top handle and then an attached set of shoulder slash crossbody straps. You know what's funny? I used to think about this bag as like, oh, it's just like a regular rectangular, plain, classic kind of shape bag. But like when you look at all of the details together, let me know if I'm like entirely wrong, but I haven't really seen like a bag in this kind of like construction. Like, yeah, there's like east-west totes, but I find that they often are either like over-designed or just like not pretty to look at. Like this is almost like minimalist in a way, right? <laughs> and maybe like my brain is broken, but like when I see the proportions of this kind of bag along with this shape, instantly like I recognize it. So for me, that also means like the design does say something. It's not just what it is, you know? And again, when we like look look at the details, you can see like the width of the strap is the same as the width of the handle, which is also like very similar, if not the same as the width of like the Telfar logo, like the little, little liney things <laughs> that make it up. I don't know, you know what I mean. There's a lot of thought there. And I think that's one of the reasons why it does look so like aesthetically pleasing. God, you guys, this is <laughs> this is a mistake. Whatever, you know, cost sunk fallacy. I'm already here. So, anyways, so what I scored it last time, I gave it actually an eight because I was like, it's a good design, but it's not that interesting. But after having it for a little bit longer and realizing like there's a lot of thought put into it, when I see other like East West tote bags, I kind of think they're ugly. But then for some reason this just works. So for me, I think I'm actually going to change the score to nine. All right. Yes, I am going to struggle this whole video. The next category is durability. If you've seen the initial review of this bag, I really sing its praises when talking about its durability. Like my partner has a bag, he fell off of his scooter and it saved his life because he didn't have a helmet on. So Telfar really like saved his life. And on top of that, like the scratches weren't that bad and they're actually like not super visible. This is a bag that has two years of everyday wear. 
Literally every single day, I would take this to work. I would load it up with the world's heaviest computer. It weighs a bajillion tons. You can see a little bit of like it deforming on the bottom. The way I also carry my computer is I have it closest to my body. So that way it's on that side of the bag instead of in the middle or on the front. Maybe if, you hold, if I show you like this, it's like more visible. Yeah. Oh, you can definitely <laughs> see it on that side. But then here, it's not even really that bad. I do have to say, after like more like careful thought about this bag, I do also recognize that it's like pleather. A, it's not sustainable, which like is not great, but we're not talking about that right now. But because it's pleather, it also means that in a way, like, yeah, I'm going to talk about sustainability, actually. You can't like buff out the scratches. You can't do kinds of treatments that you would normally do with leather bags. And this is the same for coated canvas, to my knowledge. I don't really have too many coated canvas pieces because it's not my favorite. You know, that's kind of one of the things you deal with when you buy like fake leather. That being said, I think this bag has held up quite well. All of the stitching still looks very well done. No loose threads here. The zipper on the inside works normal. <laughs> like, I used to think that like when you knocked magnets, it would lose the magnetism, but apparently that's not a thing. So I was going to be like, oh, the magnet like closure works really well still, but they're just going to work well because that's how magnets work. Whatever, I'm not a scientist. Or am I? Could you imagine like, <laughs> like you watch these videos and then like your doctor comes in the room. It's just me. It's like, hello, you're my patient. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be wild. Oh yeah, durability. The way that I have literally abused it, I am so cruel to this bag. I will toss it on the table, at, like on my desk at work. I mean, I don't really like to put it on the ground because that's kind of gross, but I have put it on the ground before. Like, this bag weighs a bajillion tons, but then like, the straps still are super sturdy. Honestly, that's one of the reasons why I'm like, that's why it's an attached strap, because this strap does not feel like it's going anywhere. Same with the handles. It's crazy. I mean, I've heard people have gotten like one-offs where like the coating flakes or something weird like that. But like this bag has really been through it with me thick and thin. Unfortunately, recognizing it's hard to like have this bag repaired. That does kind of nog it down a little bit when it comes to durability. Also, if you make fun of my nails, it's racist or homophobic or both. So while last time I scored it a 10 because it is so great, I am going to bring it down to a 9.5 just because now that I'm starting to notice scratches where I've like rubbed it against the wall or something, it's not something that I, I think I can get replaced. So that just takes a little hit there. All right, comfort. I think I kind of spoke about it when I talked about durability with these straps even though this is a million bajillion pounds i know the weight fluctuates it's because it's not an accurate form of measurement i'm sorry but i'm not a scientist or am i one thing i have to note is that when i'm carrying this bag when it's like full of stuff you know your straps want to do this i don't let it do that i make sure that they're split up so it disperses the weight a little bit more gently i guess when a bag is super versatile that's where like it knocks it out of the park and the fact that this bag because it also has these attached straps that are like pretty long. You can do shoulder, you can do crossbody. If you're really struggling, like if you're in the trenches, which I am sometimes, I will put one strap, I'll wear it kind of like a backpack. I'll put one strap on one shoulder and one strap on the other shoulder, but then have it still be like crossbody-ish. Or just switching to a top handle, which also is great. I literally cannot sing the praises enough of the comfort of this bag. This is literally my most comfortable bag. I have some bags back there where like, for some reason, it does just hurt my shoulder, even though I have literally like a lip balm, a card holder, maybe a battery charger, but not always. And like, I don't know, some hard candies or something because I'm like a grandma who loves to just like snack on little like treats. Last time, I know I gave this a 10. This time it is getting a 10 again. Okay, so the next category is investment value, and if you're familiar with me, you know it's something I don't super like to dwell on because I don't really like the idea of selling bags, even though like I have some bags and I'm like, oh, I should probably sell them because I don't like connect with them anymore. But I'm just like, mm, but they're here. <laughs> but I still think it's important to talk about. If we're talking about investment value of a two-year-old bag from anywhere, unless you're talking about like a Birkin, or a classic flap from Chanel, you can expect it to kind of flatline. When I spoke to this 
scoring for my original review, it was for like a new bag, fresh out the box, whatever. And I think that's kind of the only fair way to talk about it. So we're gonna talk about like, maybe it's gently used or maybe it's fresh out of the box and you realize you don't like the color or something like that, so you wanna get rid of it. So somehow, even though Telfar Clemens has managed to create this unseen before like accessibility for this bag, it still somehow sells for good prices on like secondhand markets, which is like baffling to me. Like they have like the bag security program, which they haven't had for a while, but you had the rainbow event where you could buy whatever bag color you wanted, like the neutrals went quicker, but. They're like constantly dropping these bags in all these different colors and they haven't actually added a new color in a little bit. So we're starting to get some of the same colors as before. So like, even though this bag is super accessible now, or at least more accessible than it was, although we put it that way, I'm still seeing them selling for like decent prices. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. The last score I gave it was a nine. This time, I'm just gonna keep it as a nine. All right, last category is impact. So, one of the things that I always used to say in the reviews of Telfar, and I would always give it this flat score of 7.5, because kind of like not very popular here, not very well known. You didn't ever really see anyone carrying them. People didn't really know what Telfar is. But now, it has been literally like a year and a half since I've moved here. And this brand is really starting to become a lot more prevalent. When I was in Milan, I saw someone with like the hunter's green, like the, I forget what it's called, like the forest green, small. I've seen, oh, a medium highlighter yellow at the train station. I saw someone with a cream in the medium. I've seen, oh no, that was me. I was like, oh, I've seen someone with the East Pack backpack. No, that was literally me. But still, and the best part is like, it's not just me complimenting people, it's people giving compliments back or us actually having conversations about Telfar, which is like what used to happen in the US. So I know there's been like discourse about like the conversations about race that haven't happened, but I think like we're starting to see like there's certain awareness within younger people. Younger people do want to learn and they want to get better. And we're starting to see like more of an understanding and we're starting to see like more of a celebration of like, yeah, let's support black brands and things like that. I do think that people, maybe because of like Beyonce mentioning Telfar, I'm not like completely crediting it to like Beyonce, but like, because like a lot of people are like referencing Telfar, wearing Telfar, I think Telfar is starting to become more well-known globally in general. And like, it's kind of like ripples in a pond, right? Like it's like, it starts out really small and then like soon it'll like ramp up. At least that's my assumption. Like I said, I last time I gave this a 7.5, times are changing. We're talking about Telfar taking over Europe. So I'm gonna have to change the score to a nine. All right, so that's all five categories. When we totaled up the score last time, this bag got a 44.5. But now, I got a 46.5. So it went from a high B to like a, this is an A. It counts. <laughs> Finally, it's reached where it's deserved. This is absolutely a workhorse of a bag. If you treat it decently, I don't even treat it decently, I toss this around, it'll still hold up. I don't know, it doesn't look that crazy. I've seen like Neverfuls and like book totes look crazy. Hello, this is a fraction of the cost. This has as much style, if not more, along with like a beautiful community to support it of people who just support each other carrying these bags. So I think that score is well deserved, but let me know what you think. Also, I want to know if you guys have any Telfars and how you feel about them. I know I've heard some horror stories, but I've also heard some love stories. So I would just love to hear from you guys. You know, I just, you know, write me a little like note and I'll be like, oh, but that is all I have for you today. So if you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. It lets me know that you like this kind of content and that you too care about the design behind Designer Luxury. Until next time, it's imported. I was like, what's the line? I like saying like half the song before I got to it. It's imported.